Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. Today's date is January 16, 2020, and we had a real fun, great day today, and Miss Vegas has a watch list for us. Yes, well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you had a nice trading day, because we sure did. There was just so much action going on today. Uh, we're definitely going to be talking about Trill. We're going to talk about Tesla, the QQQ, and last but not least, MU. So let's start with T-R-I-L, Trill. You know, Trill, uh, there was some news. First of all, they had regained compliance with NASDAQ for the minimum bid price requirements today. And they then announced, and that was mentioned in the morning. And uh, later this afternoon, they announced around 3.11 p.m. that there is talk of an international patent grant on the name. So you could see here that Trill had a nice move in the market on TRIL. Uh, if you noticed, it was as low as 2.30 uh, earlier today and uh, went all the way up to 2.93. So had quite the nice move there, over 4.6 million shares traded on Trill. So we probably will see some more information on this actual stock. Uh, so definitely keep this on your watch. Some people are ready in the stock and they love the news. So they, you know, as soon as they hear, you know, international patent is a strong, is a strong word, but never mind that alone. I mean, if you actually look at the weekly chart, uh, it definitely is bullish so it had um, some range contraction on the stock the Bollinger Bands were wide open and it also had a bit of a parabolic rise a couple days ago and so now we're seeing that the stock was poised for some form of continuation whether or not this news was there the weekly chart was bullish and very strong in my opinion I mean even if this news wasn't out and I had actually looked at the stock earlier in the morning when I heard that it regained compliance, I would have taken this trade from a swing trade. So I probably would have had a much better entry this morning if I actually looked at this stock earlier. However, um, you know what? That's great news about the international patent. So Jim, let's hear about Trill because this could be something people may want to consider for a swing trade if they're not even in the trade. Exactly. So over to you. Well, we had a 390 yearly high of it on this thing about a week ago. She ran up to 390, and then we had a pullback today with a double bottom right around the 220, 230 area. You see, it's respected the nine EMA most of the most of the time on this last on this run, and it started back really back on December the 13th. Right about that time, it was down here at 31 cents, and like Miss Vegas said, it regained compliance. And now she's run up and closed after hours at 283. So we have a hard resistance right here, right at 319, I'd say right around the 320 area. I'm going to pull up the 20 day chart and get a better look at it. I have three different moving averages on this, and this is what you would call as the TTM trend chart, which shows me the squeeze when we happen to have a squeeze. And on the 20 day chart, we have the 200, the 34, and the 9 EMA. It's disrespected that 9 EMA here. It did bounce above it a couple of times pre-market. And then she has been disrespecting that 9 here for the last five days on this initial breakout that we had right here. And you can see it's probably uh, with that cancer news that came out. So we have a low support down here at the 230 area. I'm going to go ahead and jot that in here and kind of fine-tune this chart up a little bit. I think I'm pretty well set. Let me go to the daily. Let me look at this one more time. See if I can find a red line support. The red line support is going to be right here at 232. So that's going to be a strong buy if we see that. And I'm going to turn that into a red line real fast. Now I'll bring it up to a pivot point area. I just kind of like it. I, I'm thinking right around here was the resistance we had to break. And that was at 284. So I'm going to turn that into a red line also. Then we're going to go ahead and bring this to a daily one minute. See if I missed anything in here. 
we did have that nice little run right into close it kind of hovered down here with a uh, little ascending triangle we had that double bottom triple bottom right down here and she broke out and hit resistance at 249 right around the 247 area pulled back run over that 200 a couple of times and then we had the squeeze right in here with the moving averages and I'm going to magnify that up just kind of show you what I mean by a breakout you got that 9 that crosses over the 234 and then she started respecting that 9 all the way up yes she's disrespected it right now but we're pulled back here to a 262 area of support and then she's bounced up here after hours so let's pull this back up to the daily one minute whoops let's bring this up to the date Whoop, wrong one right there she did have a little breakout here after hours into that new resistance at three dollars so we're going to go ahead and draw a support level right here and another one right in here for low we have a low support down here at this area of 249 that's going to be a real strong buy we have the third support right in this area right in here at 266 267 and we have that second support right here at 279 and I like to see this 285 hold we'll have to decide if that's determined for tomorrow morning but try to get in if it does pull back you got a solid support right in here right around the 266 267 area with a resistance to break right here at three and if I pull up that yearly chart one more time we have a long resistance to 390 and that's where we want to take it to and then if we can break that yearly resistance we can go into new highs but try to see if we can get in here at these three different support levels with a real strong buy where that nine EMA is right now at the 230 area and that's true the next one we're going to talk about is one that got bashed today by some fat cats, and that's Tesla, but they didn't respect that too much, and Tesla ran on us. So Tesla, Miss Vegas. Yes, so you know what? So Morgan Stanley this morning downgraded the stock, and uh, we saw this morning the stock had a knife, uh, went as low as $492.17. We're like, what? I mean, this was doing so well. And uh, you know what? The downgrade alone. And you know, my, my, my thought sometimes is when these fat cats downgrade the stock, I'd love to know if Morgan Stanley picked up shares at these levels. Because you know what? The stock then had a high of day and reversed. Shortly after 1 o'clock, the stock was starting to move. Went as high as 514.46. And even as we're speaking right now, we're at 510.55. We were just moments ago at 5.11. So, you know what, Jim? I want to hear you, what you think about this because I saw also some option money flow coming in. Then they were buying the 5.17 strike expiring tomorrow. So that was interesting to see. And uh, some people have the 5.20 calls. I have the 5.20 calls. But I'd like to hear what you think on this chart because you were calling the supports and resistances beautifully today. And, uh, you know, I just don't know if I can see Tesla going back to this 492 where it was earlier today, actually tomorrow. So I'm bullish on this at this point, and I can foresee this going maybe to 515. So, Jim, I want to hear what you think because you've been charting this beautifully today. Yeah, I just cleared all the lines off this chart because I just had it so fogged up. I had to, I had to restart it. But, you know, this is what gets me. Here we are, we had a, a, a yearly high at 547.41. We called this in the room right down here at 180. We're really hot on this trade. And she run up and hit that 200 EMA, and then she's pulled back, and then we had the earnings breakout. And when that her first earnings came out right here, it was positive. I mean, and then we're due for earnings here coming up here real soon. So there's a lot of reasons why the earnings were positive, but this was before we were getting the numbers out of China, which we're allowing, they're saying they're building a thousand cars a week in China, period. So you still have these fat cats that are trying to bring this stock down. What well, got me about the downgrade today, and it really, really upset me in a way, because I was in the trade, and it was coming out, breaking out bullish. And then about 15 minutes after the market opened, here comes Morgan Stanley with a downgrade. And I'm wondering, no, oh, this is funny. You know that Cohen idiot, he came in here and said that it was going to go down to 200. 
and we had a big bounce had a big dip on that too and it regained and bounced back up so sometimes you can't beat forward guidance and momentum and that's what I like so much about Tesla plus Musk you know stopped his tweets which really brought that the only thing that brought that stock down so we had that huge breakout it pulled back I got some more I was in the calls and then you know I was kind of sweating bullets a little bit so I got out of the trade about even a little under even and right when I sold it it ran up and I could have got me a hundred percent on that trade of that option not as that I was in we did hit a double top right here at the fourth 14 area. I'm still 100% bullish on this trade. And we have a low we have a support level right here at 50665. But I think a lot of this has to do with with these guys that are just too late to the game and they just want to get in the stock or they want to try to short it themselves and then get back in it. So today we developed a little ascending triangle. Let me we had them lower highs and it kept respecting that 200 EMA and bounced off that 200 EMA on a daily one minute. And then at the end of close, we had the ascending triangle. So this thing can break out again. It's got to break this resistance of 514. Now I'm going to draw a couple more supports in here that I see. I see one right in here, right at the 509 area. I'm going to draw that in and I see another one right down here. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow if some other fat cat's going to come in here and try to bring this stock down. I think they're kind of out of out of mainstream right now. My opinion is that they haven't adapted to the new the new order of the internet and how much um, simple traders like you and I get in here and we can trade this stock and we 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 believe in forward guidance and. I'm thinking in about four or five years, Tesla is going to be around $1,700 a share. That's my opinion. You know, don't take it to the bank. But I think we're just now starting to have a real nice breakout. Yes, we're going to have our pullbacks. And always remember when you do have a sharp pullback on this, wait for a confirmation and then jump in the trade and scalp it. It's scalping material right now. You could hold you a small position and go along with it. But the support level, the low support is going to be under 500. That's when you're going to really start to like the trade. And the resistance to break this coming week, I don't know, we got the markets closed on Friday, I think, on the 20th. So this coming week, I think we can break this 514 and get it up to that $600 level that people's been talking about for the next resistance. But I'm definitely going to see my 2020 prediction that I made four years ago to $600 this year. And if that happens, I'm going to suggest another five years. We're going to take it 17, and that's Tesla. Low support under 500. You can stop this chart at any time. The resistance to break is going to be this 5.1402, and always wait for a confirmation. The next one we're going to talk about is an ETF, and it's going to be QQQ. It has a lot of our main trades that we like to watch in it. Miss Vegas. Okay. Yes, I do want to just briefly talk about the QQQ. You know, it has a lot of the NASDAQ 100 stocks. And, um, you know, it's an ETF, and it basically tracks the NASDAQ 100 stocks. And uh, there's a lot of different holdings in here. I mean, there's Apple, there's Microsoft, there's Amazon, there's Facebook, um, there's Google, there's the Class C shares, the Class A shares. So, again, it just has a lot of stocks, a lot of technology stocks. So... Um, you know, the QQQ, you know, a lot of money going on in the dark pool. Oh, my God, Jim, Tesla is at 513.49. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that. Um, as we're speaking, it's up $2.50. Yep. Um, so anyhow, I just wanted to mention on this QQQ. So I've been following the dark pools, uh, which is obviously the exchange that traders, um, you know, the fat cats trade on that is not for the public. And uh, on the dark pool prints that we saw, there was a lot of money flow going into QQQ, but we weren't sure, you know, we don't know if they're buying or selling. So anyhow, we also um, took the QQQ, I noticed them and I said, okay, if the QQQ can print the actual um, print over 222, 
then it's bullish and you know can it have a continuation so we did see the qqq i saw it print around 222.04 then i saw the 222.10 and i said okay this is bullish so we took some qqq calls for tomorrow we have the qqq uh 222s for tomorrow's date um expiring obviously january 17 and uh, we have those in play and then we also have the ones that are for January 24. So we have picked those ones up and we'll see how those play out tomorrow. So Jim, do you have any comments with regards to the QQQ chart? Um, what I am looking for on the QQQ, I'd love to see this go to 223 and 223.50 at this point. All right. So over to you. Me and Bay watching the SPY today. That sure looked off very pretty. The QQQ on the yearly low is down here at 160.32. It's bounced off this 200 three different, almost four different times, maybe five if you want to count these here little individuals right here. We did have an ascending triangle breakout on it right about here, right around the 194 area, and that's where that 200 EMA is right there at 194.75. But look at this run here into Christmas season. I mean, that's just a beautiful little run. Um, I'm going to say, you know, support if anything happens to bring these stocks down or if we have a correction. Look for it to go down to about the 34 EMA on a yearly chart to hold that support level. And if it's really bad drama, look at the 200 EMA. But for right now, we closed at 222 $222.28, $222.28. And let me pull up the 20 day and we can have a little, well, let me find another support here. Right there around the 216.33 area. And then one right here. Right there at the 218. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day. One hour. And I'm going to see if I missed anything. Yeah, I've got a support level right in here. At the 219.60. And I'll use this 200 also on 20 day one hour chart to find supports. You've seen we hit it down here five times. We actually went bro for a real strong buy. So the QQQ can dip down here to the 200 again for a strong buy if you ever see that number. That's on a 20-day, uh, one-hour chart. But for right now, we're going to call low support right down here at the 220. And I'm going to turn that into a red line. Just like that. That's going to be our low support just in case it decides to pull back and that's going to be I mean low 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 unless it goes below that then we're going to count on that 200 EMA for right now we do have a yearly high up here at 22.34 first support's going to be right let's bring this up now to the uh, daily one minute we got a low low support here at 220 we got a pivot point area Right in here, right around the 220.90 to 221.10, about a 30, 20 cent difference there. And then we got another support right here at the 221.45. That's going to be your second support. This channel is going to be your third, and the strong buy is going to be right down here at the 220. The first support is going to be this 221.80, and then the resistance to break is going to be that 222.34. And if we can do that, where it looked like we just moved up a little bit. And if the spy keeps going up, I'd kind of be watching this QQQ along with it. And we need to break up. And I go into 50 cent intervals after this 22,250, 22, 2, 3, 22, 3, on up. That's how I would tackle this next trade. And that's QQQ. And the last one we're going to talk about is one Miss Vegas has been monitoring, 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 you know what I mean, watching for the last week or so, and that's MU. Yeah, you know what? So I really have uh, been liking Micron. Unfortunately, it didn't really follow through the way I thought it was going to follow through at the start of the week. I was actually looking for it to break towards the $60, and it really just had a very late start, and it had a lot of pullbacks um, since basically Tuesday. It had a rough time. Um, they did have their annual shareholder uh, conference today and uh, that seems to have gone quite well because 
you know, later in the day, I kind of saw a, a spike coming through on Micron. And I also saw a lot of buying after hours on the actual stock. So can we see some follow through? Also saw some um, option contracts coming through late in the day. And also a lot of money flowing into Micron in particular for the April expiry date on Micron. So I saw a lot of contracts, for example, for the 5750 calls tomorrow. I saw some money flow in there. I saw also the $57 strike for tomorrow. And then I saw a whole bunch. Um, really what stood out for me was two contracts. Um, both for one was for a million dollar premium and the other one was for $1.2 million in premium. Both of them, uh, one of them picked the 6250 contracts and they're targeting that towards April 17 expiry. And those contracts are 266 at the time that they were purchased. So a million dollars went there. And then there's another set of contracts for the, um, they're buying them in the money. They're buying the ones with a $28 strike for July. And those ones were $393, which is kind of weird. Um, that, that's actually not, oh, sorry, 393 contracts at 2,990 each that trader put in 1.2 million. So that one's already buying seriously deep in the money. So very interesting how they picked that strike price, 28. So very interesting. Um, anyhow, uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow with Micron. I do expect or anticipate a potential gap in the morning, a gap up. Uh, again, just because of, I, it seems like the annual event uh, with the shareholders went really well. And uh, also saw the money flow came in, uh, to be in, uh, particular, came in after three o'clock. So I do like what I'm seeing. And I guess we'll wait and see what happens tomorrow. And Jim, what do you think about this Micron chart? I, I, I like it. I was kind of wondering why you liked it so much when I was seeing such kind of a descending pattern on it for a week. But we're going to, and I think it's because of, uh, was it a meeting? you're talking about i liked it specifically because of the meeting coming up yes yeah. so let's look at the yearly chart here we've had a real nice run on this i'm going to go ahead and eliminate all these numbers all these i've had this on here for three years so i'm going to clear that up we had a resistance at one time we had to break up here at 5117 it has been kind of been very bullish on it it's pulled back and hit that 200 a few times we did have a low down here for a yearly chart of 3214 so it's almost up 100%. We've 58.48 on a weekly high here, or at least on a 20-day high. And then she's pulled back and found support right here at the old, old resistance level. And that was right here at 55.62. Now, I'll keep in mind, um, Morgan Stanley's, well, not about Morgan Stanley, but keep, when you're in a sector like the chip makers, you could be watching AMD, IBM, and all these other stocks that follow in that sector so you know it's it, it's always good to have a little balance a little sector sheet on your watch list and then i'm going to draw these trend lines where i think we are here on a daily and the resistance that we need to break is going to be at 58.32 so let me pull this up on a 20 day and i'll show you, and I, i'll show you what i mean by descending pattern when we've got a stock we're watching doesn't mean just because we have a descending pattern that it's bad it just means it's one that you want to watch. So we were up here at 58.80, and I'm going to draw this little pattern right in here. And this is what kind of threw her for a loop because it kept going down on her, but she was very excited about the trade itself. You see here we've had about six or seven days of lower highs, and then we had a little foundation right down here at the 56.63, where it touched down one, two, three, four, five, six different times in an eight day period. So that was six times it touched that bottom, which made it a strong buy. That's where I would have probably took this entry at that 56.63 after I found that consolidated period right there. It did break out from the last resistance at 55.51. It also bounced off this 200 day two times. So that would have been another even waiting for that 200 on a 20 day one hour chart would have been a great entry for this trade down here at 
I'm going to go ahead and draw that trend line in here where this had that pullback this morning here at 56.19. But one thing I admire about Miss Vegas, she don't just write them off. She just sits there and, and, and kind of like, I don't know, it's not babysitting, but she keeps them on her watch list. And that's six, $60 at 60.10 ran right into that 200 day, which made it a pretty solid buy. And then today it had another good day, so it ran up from that 60.10 all the way up to 57.68 in the close here. The resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be that 57.77 area. We closed at 57.68, and support is going to be right down here at the 57.03. It's going to be one of them, and then you got another one right here at 57.28. So I'm going to pull up the daily one minute. The resistance that we need to break is going to be right here at that eight day high at 58.67. If we can bust past that 58.67, we'll go up to new highs on the yearly high. Let's pull it up to daily one minute and look at it real fast. See the mm -hmm. channel that it was in today? It was in that day right here at 57.28 area and just couldn't break this, this, this area of 57.60. It did pre-mark, I did here at open, but then it pulled back pretty sharp. And we had that double, that triple bottom right here at the 57.28, which I love playing triple bottoms on a breakout. And then she went ahead and respected that, 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 that 200 on a daily one minute, and then really started to run right into close, which fills us full of excitement. So we want to break that 58.88. Oh, let me see what that number was again. Yeah, 58.80 coming up into next week or even sooner. That's going to be our strong resistance to break. With the low support is going to be that that 200 EMA on a day on a 20 day one hour, or that support level at 56.10 where we've hit many or this this level right here at 56.63. Strong buy at 56.10. I hope that didn't confuse you any, but we did have a descending pattern. And it did break out of that pattern today. And there's something else I wanted to mention with Tesla. I'm going to put this in as a bonus stock. And that's going to be Nile. Anything you want to say about Nile, Miss Vegas, before I get on to this? Well, you know, I'm not watching Nile today all day. I mean, Nile had a nice run. I mean, there was over 97.95 million shares traded. And, um, you know, Nio had a high rate, you know, high of day here at 445. Um, and so it's, I think Nio, you know, don't forget there's the chatter, the rumor out there about a potential activist investor that's going to inject $1 billion into Nio. It has not been confirmed. It's just chatter out there. So, you know, there's a lot of hopeful people that hope to see, can the stock turn around? Can this, if they were to get injected that kind of capital, can they, you know, uh turn this around and so right now there's doubtful people people comparing this to like a miniature little tesla um remains to be seen like if if nile can recover i mean i was like loving this company when it first came out but i've been extremely disappointed because their cash burn is so bad but i guess you know right now with this chatter about this activist investor that might put in one billion dollars there's been some interest on the stock. So, you know, still watch it every day. You could still trade it. Do I really want to swing this trade at this point? No, I don't. Um, but I can definitely, you know, day trade it. And, you know, it's a bit risky, I think, if you were to swing trade it. Um, again, everyone has different opinions and thoughts on if they would swing it or not. I'm just saying for me, I, I don't like the cash situation, so I don't really want to. But uh, definitely have been day trading it here and there. So, Jim, I mean, I don't know what else you'd like to add to that. I want to add. You, I know you've been watching this daily yeah. as well. I'm going to add that I'm I'm a guy that likes patterns. I like to look for stock patterns. I like to to look at candlesticks. I like to play off uh, moving averages, and I use, like to use my extended trend lines. For right now, we're, we've got us an ascending pattern that's gone on here for three weeks, and it's had higher lows, and then we've had a resistance level right here at the 447 area. As you can see, we hit that again today with four different tops. So as it starts to, as this pattern starts to squeeze, I think into next week, 
if the momentum keeps up we can break this 447 area and run it up to 487 and try to get it to five bucks again I'm getting a little I'm, I'm starting to get bullish on it too I watch it every day I like to play the pullbacks on it it does have its days where it does pull back pretty hard that happened to us yesterday some news came out and Vegas said no nah. I think she jumped in the trade she you know and I was gonna short it I was gonna buy puts on it and I decided not to and then right into right at right into this was right into close where it went right here and then it bounced on up and hit that 430 area she mentioned it was going to go to 425 and that's exactly what it did and then into close it did pull back again but i have a little trend line that i'm following here too where we've had them lower highs into this ascending triangle and this pattern here is my strongest pattern of all patterns that i play and it's called the ascending triangle pattern google it youtube it and and you'll learn that how strong it can be but the resistance that we got to break is going to be this 447 the low support is going to be right around this 402 area i'm going to change it to 401 because that's my lucky employee number that or i'll run it up here against this trend line and hopefully it holds up there as the days go on this trend line is going to tighten up it's going to run into this resistance level if it doesn't break out sooner than that and that's Nile. I just wanted to add that in there just because of Tesla. I think this is a sister play or a little brother play to Tesla also. If for smaller traders, you know, that don't have the money. And this also, you can play options in this trade. And let me tell you something. The options count on this trade has been very high. Very high. I mean, extremely high. Into the hundred thousands. So that's Nile. And that's it for the aftermarket report. Always remember when you're on our website you know you can join us we have a little page right here it's called chat service we have the pricing and this and the setup instructions and testimonies and a little bit of our team also we have a little bird right over here that brings you to Twitter we were got 558 followers right now and we've just started this a couple three or four months ago and that's not too bad and we also have on the website where you can follow us on one of our favorite websites, Stock Twits. Vegas and I have both of our channels on here right here. Please hit that follow button. And always remember, subscribe and smash that like button or subscribe button and that like button. Miss Vegas, do you have anything else you want to close with before we shut this thing down? You know what? I think we had a great day today, um, a great review of the picks to watch for continuation tomorrow and again you know we have a free trial so i mean you don't have to join you can come check it out and then you decide if you want to join or not um you know the room's very active and we talk through a lot of trades i mean i can i'll show this on the next video but that we'll do on sunday but you know being on voice is really really helpful because i have messages say jim can tell you as well um there were a couple people today in tesla that were in the red and i was telling them not to sell their calls and they actually said two female traders in here one was nikki one was amaria and they both said that you vegas saved my account today and you know what that really meant a lot to me to hear that because you know when you're in the red it is not a good feeling to close a trade in the red and nobody likes to close anything red. I mean, I don't either. And I've had to close some red Tesla calls on Friday last week. Um, but the fact that they actually appreciated that we talked on voice, talked through the trade, talked about the chart, talked about the tape was very helpful. So I love the fact to know that we are helping people and that's why we love doing what we do. So have a great evening, everyone. We'll definitely see you on Sunday. Yeah. Have a great night. I was in that Tesla trade too, and and I cost average down on it. I was pretty well deep in the red, and and I had my expiration tomorrow, and I wanted to get out of it today because you never know what you'll wake up to the next morning. And I was able to get out a little below even, but if I'd have held it just for maybe three more minutes, I would have recognized the engulfing candles, and I would have come out with a grand on a on on that trade. But I, I kept throwing Morgan Stanley in my head. And, but sometimes you just can't beat that momentum. And that's what Tesla's all about, is the momentum and the guidance. And the earnings are starting to be positive. So 
we've got a lot more climbing to do on this trade. And this is it for I Love Stocks and the Aftermarket Report. We closed down right at my great employee number at 401. So I want everybody to have a great day tomorrow. And remember, the market's going to be closed on Friday. Uh, and No, I'm Monday. Home, Monday, excuse me. Monday. Martin Luther King Day. So the yeah. market will be closed. So I think maybe Jim and I might even do a video, like prepare the video maybe on Monday to prepare you for Tuesday. Yeah. Because if we do it Sunday, you guys might forget. So yep. I think we might do the video Monday so that prepare you for Tuesday. So right. on that note, hope you guys have a great trading day Friday. And um, please follow us on social media because we do post a lot of great ideas in real time. Yeah, and we're a learning we're a learning website. We're a learning channel, so that helps out a lot of beginner traders. This is I Love Stocks. Today's date, January sixteenth, twenty twenty. And have a great day. We love stocks.